Neighboring nations are joining forces in hopes of tackling problems both countries face. Mexican President Felipe Calderon kicks off his two-day visit to the United States, meeting with his counterpart, U.S. President Barack Obama. On the top of the agenda for the visit, immigration, organized crime, and border security. And one major issue for both presidents, the recent immigration law passed in Arizona. Mexican President Calderon criticized the law and made it clear the people in his country are angry. Meanwhile, during Calderon's welcoming ceremony at the White House, U.S. President Barack Obama asked for Republican support to push immigration reform legislation through Congress. And between meetings and state dinners, Calderon will visit Arlington Cemetery tomorrow, an uncommon stop for a Mexican president. In the past, Mexican leaders have refused to go there because it's a reminder of the 1914 U.S. military seizure of the port of Veracruz. Calderon's symbolic visit is a way he can recognize the Latinos and Mexican Americans fighting in the U.S. armed forces. Many say President Calderon's visit to Arlington National Cemetery is a sign that times are changing for the United States and its neighbor. But in the midst of a, over the battle over immigration reform, others question what role Mexicans really have in this country. Well, joining me to discuss all of this is immigration activist Ron Gochez. So, Ron, first of all, you're also a high school social studies teacher. Tell me a little bit about what you see when it comes to military recruitment at your school. Right. Well, what we see is a lot of military recruiters, especially in communities of color where people, uh, you know, don't have the resources to go to college immediately without maybe perhaps the assistance or some type of financial aid. So we see that the military recruiters really come into the schools and communities of color, low-income communities much more, and really recruit these kids who really don't, sometimes don't have other options other than the military. So we, you know, we always try to encourage our kids to seek higher education, try to go to college first uh, before any other option. Right, and I read that uh, somewhere that you had written about the tanks and the camouflage people coming into the school cafeterias and stuff, and you also wrote about the quote-unquote Operation Brown Shield and how that shield will be thrown out to the front lines to defend the United States. What do you mean by that? Can you elaborate a little bit about that? Definitely. When you look at the statistics on the numbers of African-American and Latino soldiers and Native American soldiers since Vietnam, since even the Korean War, our numbers in the United States, and then if you look at our numbers in the military, the number of deaths of U.S. soldiers, they're very disproportionate when you look at the African-American and Latino communities. Although we only represented, for example, in Vietnam, 11 percent of the U.S. population was African-American, but African-Americans represented 22 percent of the deaths in Vietnam. So what we're saying is that our, our, uh, our communities, our kids, are thrown in the very front, and they form what is really like an Operation Brown Shield. So the black and Latino people at the very front, they're going to suffer the heaviest losses, the heaviest consequences. And what we're saying is when we come back to our communities, our ghettos, our barrios, you know, our communities aren't any better. And in fact, we have kids today fighting in Iraq, you know, trying to fight other people over there, and at the same time, their families here in the United States are being threatened with deportation. Their own families here are under attack for being brown. I mean, imagine people from Arizona who are fighting people in Iraq or Afghanistan who are brown, and back home, they themselves are being targeted and persecuted for being brown. So these are very uh, heavy contradictions that we simply cannot ignore, and that's why I think it's important that we, we focus on this and tell our students, you should go to college uh, before any other options. And why do you think those numbers exist? Do you think the United States military is targeting these groups uh, in their recruitment practices? Oh, without a doubt. In the Spanish uh, t television channels, you see uh, multi-million dollar campaigns aimed at our community. Where I saw one commercial where they even play on the family structure. They play on Mexicans, uh, a Mexican family watching the soccer game, and then the daughter goes up to the roof and fixes, uh, fixes the antenna, and then 10 years later, it's that same girl who turns into a woman who's fixing the satellite for the U.S. military. So they definitely, uh, they definitely target our communities more, and they know that, especially now because of this immigration debate, they're trying to lure our kids with the promises of, of some kind of documentation. They're saying, if you sign here, if you join the U.S. military, we'll give you and your family papers. So we're saying not only is that not true, we're seeing soldiers now who are having their families deported. We're seeing U.S. military veterans who have been deported after serving for their country. So we're telling the kids to be very careful, uh, not just at the schools, but in general, anybody. We're telling people to be very careful about these promises and a lot of times false promises from the U.S. military campaign recruiters who are, who are targeting our communities. 
And I want to talk a little bit about the Mexican president's visit to Washington, D.C. today. He is expected to visit Arlington National Cemetery tomorrow. And obviously, as I'm sure you know, a Mexican president hasn't visited the cemetery since 1914 after the invasion of Veracruz. Now, many American Marines who participated in that military intervention are buried in the cemetery. Why do you think Calderon is now visiting the cemetery? And how is the Mexican-American community where you are reacting to this visit? Well, uh, first of all, the, the president of the Mexico coming to the United States, uh, we know that he's trying to push for immigration reform like a lot of other people are. And we know that, you know, for the history of the Mexican people in this part of the United States, obviously for, for Mexicans to join the U.S. military is to join the same military that took half of the Mexican territory. So when kids today join that military, they really are joining the military that fought against their own communities from 1846 to 1848 uh, during the U.S. invasion of Mexico. Now. For Galderón to come to visit, obviously he's showing that the, the Mexican people here in the United States, not only are they exploited for their labor in factories and in the workplace, but also Latinos and immigrants in general serve in the U.S. military armed forces. And he's saying that, you know, and, and this is something that I agree with, how can the U.S. government say they want to get rid of immigrants, but they actively recruit immigrants into the armed forces? In fact, there's been cases where military recruiters have crossed the border and have gone down um, into Tijuana, Baja California, to recruit kids from high schools in Tijuana. So for them to say that they don't target our community is a, is a, is a lie. So I think that like, Calderon is trying to prove a point that if they want us to fight in their military, then they should legalize our communities here in the United States. Well, Ron, that's all the time we have for now, but we're going to continue to update our viewers on Calderon's visit uh, to the cemetery.